Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Right now at noon, winter returns. The local forecasters are tracking inches of snow. As you can see for, from the Storm Tracker 4, it has already started to fall. And right now there is a winter weather advisory for parts of our area as we take a live look outside. So we want to get it right over to Brandon Rue to start us off this noon. Brandon, this has the possibility to make the drive home from work or school a bit rough. That's really our biggest threat concern for the rest of the day today. You can see the clouds are really starting to fill in from the south. Temps are in these low and middle 30s, but falling. We were up to 40 degrees and now these northeast winds starting to push into some of this moisture, causing some evaporation, which causes cooling in the air. The winter weather advisory is only for our north zone. It started and it runs until 7 p.m. for Oakland Macomb counties until 4 a.m. for our northern north zone counties. But Storm Tracker 4 is picking up a little rain here on the east side, including Wayne County, Southern Macomb and Monroe counties. But some decent snow moving through Washtenaw and into Livingston County. And again, the brunt of this snow, accumulating snow, meant to be up in our north zone. So temperatures will be falling down back through the middle 30s, just supporting the transition even where it's raining to a mix and then snow and an inch or two possible around Metro Detroit with more maybe three to five in our north zone. Of course, we've got everything covered for you on the local Forecasters app. It's free. Just put your phone camera right up to that box in the middle of that QR code and it'll link and sync you right to our local forecasters app. And our other top story at noon, a stolen school bus chase through Metro Detroit. Someone stole this school bus from a locked yard last night, then left a trail of destruction through multiple cities. It started in Augusta Township and ended in Canton Township. Sean Lay is live working to get more information from Michigan State Police. Sean, what do we know right now? We can get into it right away, Kim. Great to see you at this noon hour. And also, as you can see on your screen, when Brandon said snow in Washtenaw County, just like that, as you see, snow here at the Brighton Post of the MSP. So be careful if you're headed out as this snow continues. But we are talking about that wild chase and a 26-year-old who is behind bars right now facing a long list of charges that include unlawfully driving away with a vehicle, resisting and obstructing police, fleeing and eluding, and destruction of property, all because of this. Take a look at your screen. Last night around 820 MSP tells us the man decided to drive off with a school bus from the Lincoln Consolidated School locked bus yard in Augusta Township out here in Washtenaw County by smashing through that locked gate. Then this got pretty wild from there. Multiple attempts were made by police after he was spotted to get this guy to just stop the bus, but he kept going according to MSP. He got all the way to Canton Township where he apparently ran a red light and then rear ended a pickup truck. That's dangerous stuff. That finally ended the chase, though, that accident. Only minor injuries. The good news for the people in the pickup truck, minor injuries for the runaway bus driver. Again, uh, lodged in the Washtenaw County Jail on that long list of charges I told you about. If he heads to court, we will uh, be there to cover that. And we're also going to head back in and talk to investigators about why this guy decided to take a bus and how. We're live in Washtenaw County at this noon hour. Sean Lay, Local 4 Kim, back to you. All right, thank you, Sean. And an update to a story we first brought you at last night at 11. The Woodhaven Police Department is responding to a display that left many outraged over the weekend. Someone put up a Confederate flag and signs that read Black Lives Don't Matter outside of the police department yesterday. Police say the man is known to officers and has done this before. They say he was actually protesting the Woodhaven Police Department for what he thought was unfair treatment during a prior arrest. The department says they do not condone this protest but say it's not an arrestable offense. 
And now to an update on a story our help, our help Me Hank team has been following from the beginning. The site of the green ooze in Madison Heights will be demolished this week. The Madison Heights City Council has awarded a contract to tear down electroplating services on 10 Mile near I-696. Now you'll remember contamination from the site reached I-696 back in 2019. Local, state and federal officials have been working to clean up the area since then. The demolition will begin on Friday. And a man and woman are shot overnight, leaving a hookah lounge in Detroit. Please tell us someone in a car pulled out a gun and fired off multiple rounds around three this morning. A 27 year old man and a 21 year old woman were hit. It happened at a hookah lounge on Strathmore near Six Mile and Hubble on Detroit's west side. The victims are stable at the hospital. And a house fire rekindled in Oakland County this morning. Sky 4 was over the home on Bristol Lane near 13 Mile and Losser in Bingham Farms. The fire started yesterday when someone was cooking with propane in the garage. It quickly spread and the house is completely destroyed. However, thankfully, the family got out safely. And now to the war in Ukraine. At least seven people were killed when the city of Lviv was hit by Russian missiles today. This is a look at the aftermath. The western city has been a place of refuge for thousands trying to escape the war-torn eastern part of the country. As Bree Jackson reports, this comes as Ukraine's president is asking President Biden to come see the devastation firsthand. White House officials have said it's highly unlikely President Biden would visit Ukraine in the near future. Russia is intensifying its attacks and Ukrainian forces are putting up a fierce fight to hold them off. Ukraine refusing to surrender the shattered city of Mariupol, the scene of the war's heaviest fighting so far. No, the city still is not fallen. There is still our uh, military forces, our soldiers, so they will fight till the end. President Zelensky warns of major consequences if the city does fall. He's urging President Biden to visit Ukraine. But I think, I think he's the leader of the United States and that, that, that's why he should come here to see. The chancellor of Austria toured the war-torn country, witnessing devastation in places like Bucha, becoming the first European leader to sit down with Vladimir Putin for what he calls a frank I conversation. I saw. I saw the war crimes. I saw the massive loss of the Russian army and I told him that there is a need for humanitarian corridors. Russia's president shows no sign of letting up his relentless attacks. So the Russians now, Ukraine's unique. Including in Lviv this morning. Celebrity chef Jose Andres says the World Humanitarian Kitchen was among the properties destroyed and civilian deaths are mounting. What I remember is dead bodies around us. Yeah, So you are driving around dead bodies, dead children. Across the world, people are praying for Ukraine. Pope Francis using his Easter address to condemn the war and call for peace. Ukrainian officials warn a takeover of Mariupol could put an end to peace talks. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for NBC News. All right, thank you, Bree. And some good news. You are paying a little bit less to fill up at the gas pump this week. Gas prices are continuing to dip slightly. AAA says prices in Michigan are down three cents compared to last week. Drivers are now paying an average of $3.92 per gallon. On average, it's going to cost you about $58 to fill up a 15-gallon tank. In Metro Detroit, we're paying a little bit more at $3.97 per gallon. Ann Arbor has some of the most expensive prices in the state, still averaging above four dollars and today is tax day the federal deadline to get your filings in as well as payments into the irs or file for an extension it's typically the 15th but the deadline was pushed back because of the emancipation holiday in washington dc if you haven't completed your returns yet you're not alone nearly one third of all americans don't file until the very last minute the average refund so far this year is more than thirty two hundred dollars now that's up eleven percent from this time last year and a new study shows that Michiganders are recycling now more than ever. Eagle officials say Michigan has increased its recycling rate by more than 35%. It's an effort to continue recycling efforts. Eagle says over $7 million in infrastructure grants will fund projects across the state. That's going to help create 25 to 30 new jobs with wages from 17 to $20 an hour. 
when it launches next year. A 202,000 Renew Michigan grant is going to make it easier than ever to recycle at all city of Detroit parks and in some additional neighborhoods. Eagle says Michigan's legislature is committed to raising the state's recycling rate to 30% by the year 2025. And the Boston Marathon has begun. In fact, actually, some people have already finished. It's happening with fewer COVID restrictions, but there are still changes in place for the runners. We'll take a look at that. But first, how video games sparked the evacuation of one of the busiest airports in the country this weekend. We'll talk about that next. 